Welcome to this video tutorial about RHRB, R heart rate variability. In this tutorial, we're going to present the functionality of this toolkit to perform analysis in different intervals of a recording. If you are interested in an introductory video tutorial to RHRB, you may check another videos of this YouTube channel, or you may go to the RHRB website. You can find a link to the website in the description of this video. One of the most characteristic functionality of RHRB is the functionality it provides to perform analysis comparing heart rate variability parameters in different intervals of a recording. These intervals may correspond with different situations to which a patient has been subjected or they may correspond with different pathological events that have occurred to the patient. For example, if we have a patient who suffers from sleep apnea, these intervals may be the intervals where the apnea has occurred. And our heart rate variability, our HRB, provides functionality to compare heart rate variability parameters inside those apnea episodes and outside those apnea episodes. We're going to show you an example about how this functionality works. I'm going to change the working directory to the one where I have a sample file that I have downloaded from the R website, from the R HRB website. I load the package, I create the R HRB data structure to store the results of the analysis. We'll use verbose mode to see more information on the console. And I load the uh, recording example.bits, which you can download from our website. And now we're going to add to the data structure information about episodes. These episodes should have an initial time. In this case, there will be three different episodes starting at 700 seconds, 2000 seconds, 5000 seconds in the recording. You should specify some tags for the recording. The tags may repeat themselves. For example, if we have a sleep apnea patient, each of the apnea intervals will have the same tag. Here we have three tags, before, during, and after. And each of the intervals should also have a duration. So for example, the first interval, which we have called before, and it starts at 700 seconds, it has a duration of 900 seconds. The second interval, which we have called during, it starts at 2000 seconds and has a duration of 200 seconds. The recording we have load correspond with a paraplegic patient who had a really uh, high heart hypertension and he was giving um, a vaso uh, constrict, a vaso uh, dilator drug, which is called prostaglandin E1. Uh, the drug was administered intravenously during approximately half an hour to the patient, and uh, after that, the blood pressure fell from approximately 200 before and the drug was administered to 150 after the drug was administered. And while the drug was being administered, the blood pressure was approximately 100. That's why we have called these three intervals before, during, and after. It's before the drug was given, during the drug, while the drug was being given to the patient, and after the drug has been given. We have ad added these three episodes programmatically. We have written a line of code which has created these three episodes. These three episodes may be stored in an ASCII file of the proper format. Please consult the PDF with the main documentation of RHRB to check that format. These episodes may also be loaded from another uh, format to store physiological signals, such as, for example, MIT-B. In the tutorial, you can find an example in the PDF tutorial of how to load apnea intervals from the apnea ECG database of Fisionet, a very common database for working with patients which suffer from sleep apnea, which is in mid-bit format. So uh, you don't need to create programmatically your episodes. If you have them stored in some format in a file, uh, we 
probably provide already support for importing that file. We provide support for importing a very wide uh, range of uh, format files. You can check that also in the PDF documentation. So we're going to add these episodes to our data structure. We're going to build a non-interpolated hull rate and filtering it and now we're going to plot it. And now to the plot parameter that if you are watching this tutorial you should already be familiar with as is one of the most basic uh, RHRB parameter functions. We're going to add a new parameter to this plot non-interpolated heart rate function which is tag. Tag shows the tags which should be drawn and we are saying all the tags. Draw all the tags that the data structure has. So now we see the typical RR time series and we see the three intervals we have added, the after, the before and the during, shown in different colors. If instead of saying that we should show all the parameters, we said for example, well, we're going to interpolate uh, the, the heart rate and now we're going to plot again the heart rate instead of the non-interpolated heart rate but in this case just for as a demonstration we are only going to show the after tag so we don't have the other two tags we only have the after tag if you have different events for example uh, sleep stages of the patient during the night you could only show the uh, stages which are REM or stage 1 or stage 2 or while the patient was awake using this functionality. This is just graphic, so it's not really interesting. It can be helpful for visualizing our data, but it's not really helping us analyze the data. We're going to create a frequency analysis data structure, and now we're going to calculate the spectral analysis using a wavelet. Uh, we have another video tutorial where we have covered how to perform this analysis, so I, I won't explain anything here regarding this analysis and now we're going to plot the spectral analysis with all the tags and this is how it will look like again I can see the spectral analysis in the three intervals and I know which th that each of these intervals corresponds to an interval before we gave the drug while we were administering the drug and after we gave the patient the drug. And for example, we can see a very strong change in the parameter ultra low frequency, as we should because the drug we gave the patient is a vasodilator and we should see changes in the, in the very low frequencies of this patient. This still just visualization. We have here an example of how the graph will look like if we just plot the one of the tags, the tag after. And uh, we're going to show, do something a little bit more interesting now. RHRB has a set of split functions which will split information related to the recording based on a certain tag or set of tags. Here we're going to split the heart rate by episode using just the tag before. Therefore the recording is going to be split in the regions where the tag before has been assigned to that region in the intervals which have the tag before and all the other intervals. And we can compute different uh, values for the heart rate. Well the mean value will be the most interested inside that interval at outside. So we're going to perform that splitting. And now we have a new data structure, which is that splitting.data, which has two different uh, fields inside. One is in episodes, another out episodes. In episodes contains the information of the recording, or the information of the intervals of the recording, which had the tag before assigned. And out episodes, all the other intervals of the recording which had any other tag or no tag assigned. We can see the mean value of the heart rate just before the drug was administered and in all the rest of the recording and we see that before the drug was administered the heart rate was higher and the patient was more tachycardic at that point than in any other point in the recording. 
here we're going to uh, divide the we're going to split the high rate by the tag during instead using a single tag I could have used several tags that's why we see the combine function as the uh, value of the tag parameter now we're going to use split the recording by the during tag and we see that during the while the drug was being administered the heart rate of the patient was the lowest in the recording we can not only divide the heart rate but we can divide the um, spectral analysis and this is much more interesting we can use the split power band by episodes to split the results of the spectral analysis inside one tag or a set of tags and outside those tags so we're going to check the results of the spectral analysis before the drug was administered and I'm going to show you here the mean value of the ultra low frequency parameter in this case this splitting dot data uh, uh, variable is going to contain all the information of the spectral analysis the uh, high frequency, low frequency, very low frequency, ultra low frequency and the uh, LF uh, divided by HF parameter we're going to show here just the mean value of the ultra low frequency parameter before we administer the drug it has a mean value of 2300-2400 and now I'm going to split the power in the band by the after tag and I'm going to check what is the uh, mean value of the same parameter after the drug was administered that parameter fell to 1100 it fell to less than half of its original value which is to be expected again because the drug which was administered to the patient was a uh, vasodilator this functionality can be very useful if you have something like a uh, recording of the patient while it's being slept and you want to different dif between different sleep stages you can w you want to perform some analysis during apneas or desaturation of a patient or you have subject uh, some human volunteers or animals to different conditions for example uh, seeing different images which uh, you think they're gonna perform different they're gonna uh, uh, they're going to produce different emotional reactions in that patient and you want to use heart rate variability to distinguish between those different emotional reactions this is very useful because instead of having to cut your recording in multiple pieces and analyze those multiple pieces independently uh, you can just analyze the recording as a whole and add this episode's information if you want to know more about the uh, functionality of RHRB to work with episodes or uh, just about RHRB in general we strongly recommend you to go to our website you have a link in the um, in the description of this video over there you can find more videos and the tutorials and the sample files and a lot of resources to learn about RHRB and although I should have said this at the beginning of the recording we strongly recommend you to see these videos in high definition because you'll be able to see with much more detail what's going on in the console and the source code thank you very much for watching this video